370. Now we are 28 states and 9 union territories. So India is divided with 28 states now and 9 union territories, which was earlier 7 union territories. But Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh has been a new added territory. Now if we look at India from a global perspective, it's a land of culture. Right? If you divide India from east, west, north and south, we might have a variety of languages. Like if you go to Punjab, you will find the language would be different. Delhi, because it's a center of all migrants across India. So here the language frequently is English, Hindi and a mixed language where people can build up their communication styles, they can address people. But the best language of India is the language of harmony, the language of culture, the language of tradition, the language of belongingness, language of togetherness. You come from any community of the world and you meet anybody in India, the first thing what you will like about Indian culture, Indian business is war. Right? You will never feel that you have come to an unknown place where nobody is yours. You will find some of the other people are there coming you, supporting you, they can understand you and whatever you need from them, you will find a way out of it. So the first thing which as a you know anthropologist what you have to learn from India is human civilization. How human interact from psychological perspective. See if as a professor of business communication, I always say that people used to, there are many books in business communication which says that the biggest, you know, barrier to communication is language. Yeah. But if you look to the modern time, I would say the biggest barrier to communication is not language. I emphasize on the word that language is never a barrier to communication. Psychology is more barrier to communication oh. and there's a word called ego. E-G-O. Yes. Yes. This, you know, adamant yes. nature yeah. that when you are reserved to your own mind, your prejudices, your preoccupied thoughts, your notions, your ideas, your mental blocks, mm. they are much bigger barriers to communication rather than just having knowledge of words. So if we look to the modern time and we look from business perspective, right? So in businesses, Language can never come as a barrier, but what comes big as barrier, that's called egos. Individualism, right? Mm. Egoism. And the stereotype, orthodoxy, mental blockages, narrow-mindedness, that is more conservative form of barrier to communication rather than, you know, just having a barrier of words, barrier of language. If you see China, Right? They have many. They speak, they write on every product in Chinese. But the utility mm. of the product in the global market is that good that they proudly say you open any machine, you will find one Chinese, whether the screw, uh, screw would be made in China. right? So language can never become an obstacle, a barrier in business, in relationship, if you have a deep connect of heart and soul, if you feel like, you know, touches, if there's something hot and you touch it, you feel it. Similarly, love, air, water, fire can't be restricted to boundaries. You cannot hold air to a boundary that here in Ireland, the <laughs> winds will be different and here in India, the winds will be different, right? You cannot stop happiness to be restricted in UK or in India, right? Today, as the technology is getting advanced, right, we from a very modern computer, we are moving to technology 4.0, right? Now, artificial intelligence is swapping and taking a new giant leap in the global market. Maybe could you change this? Yeah. The best quote, what I like about Bruce Martin when he says, for good or ill, your conversation is your advertisement. Every time you open your mouth, you let men look to your mind. And not to your clothes, not to your grooming, 
not to what you have dressed, but how do you address? That's more important than how do you carry yourself, how do you dress, becomes secondary on occasions as Kenny was saying, no means are not dressed to the occasion, but you are dressed right to the occasion. That was more excellent than just being into a dress, right? So when we talk about businesses, we talk about relationship, we talk about people, you know, we talk about association, we need to understand that our speech is our advertisement, right? Whatever we are speaking, you would have seen when Dr. Singh was speaking, our group vice chancellor, at that time he narrated one of a very powerful message from Bhagavad Gita, right? Where Krishna has said two statements that in all creation of the world, all species of the world, they have poison in their teeth, except human beings. Rest all species, they carry less or the you know, uh, uh, what, you know, death, poison in their teeth. But that's only one human being. If you cut any human, you will find the blood to be red. That's the science which has divided it into, you know, WBC, RBC, platelets, and, uh, you know, so many other things. That's, again, human which has divided us into different religion, different caste, different creed, different genders. But if you look from a holistic perspective, you look from a human civilization, you look from business learnings, you will find that it's human who has to control what you're speaking. Because your words can make <coughs> and your words can break relations. Mm. So when we talk about culture, as you told me to talk about culture, Catherine, look, in, we find two kinds of culture. One is called low context culture and the other is called high context <coughs> culture. Now what is Indian culture? In Indian culture you will find the importance of business when we talk about business communication. It is that we need communication, we need uh, you know business communication for building presentations. We need it to bring new business ideas. And when we create new business ideas, that's very, very, very important that we must know culture, right? Like I will give you some example. When Cadbury's was coming to India, right? This Cadbury's chocolate, when they came to India, they find that India would not be the right market where they can promote their business. Because Indians were having a very familiar style to have Indian sweets, right? Which are milky products, which are being made in in-house. But then Cadbury's, when they came to India, for their business, they first learned the culture. Like Google, if you see, right? When Google was expanding in the global arena, Google found that till I will not become local, right? I cannot become global. So what Google did, that if it is in UK, Google is google.co.uk. If it is in India, it is google.co.in. If it is in Ireland, it is different. So that's a very important phenomena that we need to executing the seasons, for executing the seasons, for making the seasons, knowing culture, knowing communication styles, are very, very phenomenal. We must interact, right? So, uh, what did you felt in two days of your, you know, visit in India? What did you like? Yes. From your subject perspective. From my subject perspective. Thank you.